Hey guys, this is going to carry here with another Raid Shadow Legends video. And in this video, I'm going to bring up four tips and tricks on how to improve your clan boss damage. So let's get into it. Making sure you have a balanced comp. And what I mean by that is there's certain things you need to bring into your comp. If you don't bring it, your, your survivability is not going to be high enough. The, the top priorities, if you want to survive in the clan boss for, for longer runs, are going to be an attack down character and a defense up character. And so the two, so if you see all these comps here, they all have that. So he, for example, so here's my clan. Here's just some, some runs here. We got Brillo here. He has a Jareg with attack down and then he has Steel Skull with defense up. And so then, for example, Darth Micro here, he has Altan with defense up and attack down. So he's like the best for that. Uh, and then you got, you know, shields here with, with Valkyrie, but like mainly you see, here's another guy with Andro. He has attack down and defense up. And so then here, here's an example of someone that does not have defense up. And as you can see, he's only getting about 12 million per, per run here because he has attack down, but he doesn't have the defense up on the team. So 12 million per run, he would have to, you know, like six key it or something like that. Rare characters have both defense up and attack down. Examples would be marked for the defense up. Veteran and Bog Walker have the attack down. So free to play all the way to you know, pay to play uh, people can have this. It's just very important to make sure you have a balance comp, have those. Those are going to be the two things. If you don't have those, if you once you put them in, that's going to be the, one of the most noticeable differences in damage you can have. So the next thing on the list is going to be making sure your characters are speed tuned properly, which is going to be based on a lot of factors. And so the first factor is going to be whichever boss you're on. The boss is change in speed. For example, Nightmare is 170 speed and Ultra Nightmare is 190 speed. And then so you're obviously going to want to make sure you go, make sure you want to go faster. And then depending on which characters you have, you're going to either want to do a speed tuning comp or you're going to want to do a just a speed comp. And so the speed tuning is going to be if you have the like counterattack characters. If you're lucky enough to have a counterattack character like either Skull Crusher, Valkyrie or Martyr, you know, those are the only examples of a counterattack character. And so if you got one of those three, then I'd probably recommend doing a speed tune comp where you make sure they go last in the rotation. If you're on Nightmare, you have them at like 171 speed, like just before the clan boss goes. And then you have everyone else kind of in that 170 at most like 180 range, like low 180s. So then they don't jump the rotation and go too fast. Base your comp on that. Make sure that your debuffers go first and your buffers go last. Reason being is your debuffing is waiting on the boss to go. So you get to take advantage of the, the debuffs. Everyone else in the chain gets to take advantage of the debuffs. And if you have your buffers go first, you I mean, you're wasting a whole turn of that buff from most characters. So that's why you want to make sure your buffers go last. It's especially your counterattack champion you want to make sure they go at the very end. That's going to be if you have a counterattack character, that's going to be the best way to maximize your damage with that comp. If you don't have a counterattack character, which you know a lot of people don't, it's going to be a speed comp. And then a lot of times you'll see people in speed comps, how they build them is this structure. You can apply this. There's a lot of characters that fit this structure. It's going to be, let's see if we got an example here. Here's an example. So we got like Lost Park here. What he does is he has a speed lead and a speed boosting character in apothecary like golden reaper arbiter all great examples of a speed booster and then for example as the speed lead you don't need a legendary there like, everyone gets high Katoon. that's an example of a character that has a speed lead the, that everyone will have then you're definitely going to want to as you can see here he has the attack down in rear guard sergeant and he has the defense up in steel school so he still keeps that same structure that i was talking about in, in step one but then builds his comp around the speed portion instead of the counter tech portion like you see a lot of these other people doing just because it's so effective in this version you're going to just want to make sure everyone goes as fast as possible you you're actually going to try to want to lap the boss instead of go in the same order so just everything everything into speed doesn't there's no limit on how much speed you want the more the better i think the priority for these teams is you're definitely going to want the speed booster the guy that boosts everyone's turn meter to go the fastest and then go down from there so the next on the chain i would probably you could argue steel skull two different ways depending on what you're trying to do you can be like hey i want steel skull to go first to make sure that he cleanses the punch or you could be like hey i want steel skull to go last to make sure everyone has defense up for as long as possible so it, it depends on how you want to look at it for someone like him, you're definitely going to want to make sure if you have Rigor Surgeon, if you don't have a character that has attack down on his A1, you're going to want to make sure that they go pretty quick to make sure that cooldown is, stays up with enough time to keep applying it throughout the fight. And then also, you're going to want a Cold Brawler to go fast because just the more he goes, the more poisons he has a chance to apply. So it just why I bring that up is 
it's going to be dependent on your character specifically, but keep, keep those, keep, have that thought process in mind when building your comp. If you have to go the direction of the speed comp, but when it comes to this, for most people, the counterattack comp is going to be the best, but or it has a, it doesn't have a high ceiling. Some of the best runs I've seen are going to be comps with speed comps. It just takes incredible gear to reach those numbers. The gear requirement for a, an amazing speed tune run is going to be, it's going to far exceed the gear requirements for a counterattack comp. And so that, that's just why a lot of people do the counterattack comp. It's just because it's so much easier. Yes, you do need to be, get lucky to pull that counterattack character. The amount of effort required to get the to get the highest chests is not even nearly as close as what it would be in a speed comp. Number three on the list is going to be making sure your gear is optimized correctly. What I mean by that is there's a couple things that are really important when it comes to clan boss. And so the first being you know, speed, making sure your speeds are set, like I was saying in step two. But then also there's a couple of requirements that you need for clan boss. It, mainly it's going to be accuracy. So you want to make sure your accuracy is, is set to the correct amount for whatever clan boss you're on. And what's cool is that it, it just like the speed in the clan boss that ramps up, also the accuracy requirements ramp up. So as your gear gets better, your accuracy will need to get better. For example, it's it's about every fit, every Clan boss is about 50 accuracy difference. So like Ultra Nightmares 250, Nightmares 200, Brutals 150. You want to make sure your attack down character and your poisoners all have the accuracy requirement based on whichever clan boss you're on. And it, it makes a massive difference having your accuracy at the correct amount. Otherwise, you're going to be missing debuffs, especially in a key time late, later on in the, in the clan boss. It's going to be really bad. You know, you miss that. You're probably going to wipe, especially when it gets later on. Uh, and then also so at the entire fight, if you don't have the accuracy on your poisoner, then your damage is going to fall off a cliff. So those that's going to be the first set you need. The first thing you need to address for your clan boss team is going to be making sure your accuracy is at the right amount. And you can you'll just be able to tell if you if you see anything more than just a rate because even at uh, I'm in ultra nightmare, I have 282 accuracy. It doesn't happen often, but it can happen still. He can get resisted. So it's just. It's one of those things that if you're seeing it more than like once or twice, you're you're probably not in the right accuracy amount, or you're just super unlucky. But that that'd be be that would be the first thing I would look to in your team if you're if you if you feel like characters are under underperforming. The next thing I would look into is are you prioritizing the right pieces of gear? And what I mean by that, like the right stats. And so the biggest thing is I see a lot of people like it's defense is going to be the way to go for sure versus like health, for example. So you definitely want to make sure your defense is is high. You want it as high as possible. Like, for example, a Valkyrie here, you know, plus 4000. I mean, they, I would say the it starts to ramp off. You want to get it to, you know, as high as possible. But I was saying like the 4000 range is when it actually starts to fall off. If you if you notice your your characters are really low in defense, I, I would try to I would look to that and to see how much defense you actually have. I know this is an extreme case scenario of almost 6k defense. That's like super high end. She has a very high base defense. But the reason being is I wanted to show people what to actually look for. Like this is going to be like, this is an important stat to not overlook. I see a lot of people going into clan boss wondering why they're dying. And then they have not even half this. So it's, it's just a very, very good thing to check when it comes to survivability. It's going to be identifying where you need to improve, analyze your runs and see, do I need more damage or do I need more survivability? I think that's a good way to try to identify where you're at. Like, do you have characters that are going massively faster than other characters? Try to balance them all out. Do you have characters dying way before other characters are in your same team? Like, if, you, if you're having characters survive three, four turns longer than others, that's a problem. And then you can identify that as survivability on those characters and try to boost up their gear. If you're finding yourself, everyone dies at the exact same time, then may, maybe try to optimize, see how much, if you can add more damage to them. Like, for example, I was finding everyone was dying at the same time, but my Tyrell was doing like a million damage. What I ended up doing is I put crit rate on him, got his defense similar. Well, I'll level this up to, you know, get get his defense back to where it was. This improved his damage by, I want to say like 700k. Just, you know, like someone normally when I'm thinking damage, I'm thinking like, oh, I got to get my uh, cold brawler better. I need to make sure, you know, my seal skills uh, doing more damage. But you can find ways to improve your runs through 
not only through survivability or through making sure damage dealers do better, but making sure just everyone overall does more damage. Improving his damage, it was, like, it was actually a noticeable jump. I guess my point being is that think a little outside the box and like where specifically you need to improve and then you'll notice your damage numbers increase overall. Okay, and so number four and the last tip on how to improve clan boss damage, making sure you're prioritizing the right stats. Okay, right stats and right set bonuses. And what I mean by that is, first thing is there, there's certain requirements that you need to hit for sure. Uh, for example, your accuracy amounts. You want to make sure, for example, here I have a gold brawler here. It's time to do an ultra nightmare clan boss, 280 accuracy. So the clan boss is, and you don't need to always, if you're on brutal, you want to scale your your requirements to whatever to whatever clan boss you're on. And then just slowly work your way up from there. I used to be at, at brutal. And then my it used, I was like, oh man, 150 accuracy, that's going to be tough. And then I went to Nightmare. I was like, oh, getting to 200 is tough. And then now, now I'm on Ultra Nightmare and I'm able to get it to 280. But it was a slow build. Making sure your attack down character has the right amount of accuracy. Making sure your poisoner has the right amount of accuracy is going to be very important. And immediately it boosts your clan boss damage if you don't have that currently. And then next after accuracy is going to be making sure you're prioritizing the right stats for survivability. Because, you know, first of all, like if you're just a quick tip, I think a lot of people don't have this issue, but if you're putting attack percentages on your characters, that's you're missing a ton of survivability there. And so I highly recommend not having, like if you think like your attack character, like, yo, a cold brother needs to do damage. Let's put him in like crit rate and attack percentage. Like definitely steer clear of doing that. You want to make, for clan boss, it's all about proccing your, your war master, your, you know, your giant slayer. So survivability is way more important than, than that. So I, I hope... Most people know that, but I just want to address it just to make sure. And then next is going to be which type of survivability do you want? Do you want like HP percentage? Do you want defense percentage? And pretty much nine times out of 10, you're going to want to increase the defense percentage over the health percentage. It's just a way better stat. In, in They have a graph on it, but it's not accurate. Defense is just significantly better for the, the clan boss. So... I recommend making sure defense is high. So like, for example, Tyrell is in like the 4K range and then you got Valkyrie at this almost 6K. And so I wanted to show those numbers specifically that those are not going to apply to everyone, but uh, that's the kind of level of defense you're going to want to look for eventually to make sure you can survive, you know, longer into the fight. And so a lot of people like will come up to me. It's like, Hey, like, why am I not doing enough damage at clan boss? And one of the big reasons is that they really are lacking on survivability. And um, for at least for me, for example, months ago when I was looking at how to improve, I was noticing people had these massive numbers on defense. And I was like, oh, okay, I just needed to rethink on how how much defense I actually really needed. And once I started to do that, I, I it made a massive improvement for my runs. And so hopefully it makes a massive improvement for yours too. And so then lastly about gear is going to be uh, making sure you have the right set bonuses. And so usually... For the most part, you just want good pieces of gear. It doesn't really matter about the set bonuses, but I think for clan boss specifically, you can get a lot out of certain ones. So, that, and they actually, have, there's a really cool synergy here. So, clan boss and dragon are very similar in how the encounter goes, especially or like very similar in what characters are required for each one. So uh, if the, the more you build up your clan boss team, the better your dragon runs are going to go. The better your dragon runs goes, the better gear you get, and you can also improve your clan boss. So they're really synergistic in that way. So then the pieces of gear you're going to be wanting are these top three here, accuracy, speed, and lifesteal. And they can really help you um, survive longer with lifesteal, hit your speed requirements with speed, and then also hit your accuracy requirements with, with accuracy sets. And so it's just... There's a, a couple exceptions to needing lifesteal, but for most, for the most part, lifesteal is going to be your best set to start with when go, going to clan boss. I can think if you have like bad L, then lifesteal might not necessarily be needed. I've been finding with Valkyrie, I don't need lifesteal because I'm surviving. I'm not even taking damage with her shield. Her shield is just so insane, but those are two outliers. Like not many people are going to have those characters, so it's hard to recommend that, but for the most part, life still is going to be a way to go for a lot of people until way late in the game when you have a lot of really good characters. Being being pigeonholed into one piece of gear takes a lot longer to improve because you're you're waiting for very specific drops from Dragon. But that's just 
this is the name of the game for a long time unless you get really lucky in your pulls. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for me in this video. Hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, I'm available on Discord and YouTube. So let me know down there and you guys have a good day. Peace.